tell me everything. About what? The do, of course. Who was there? What were they wearing? What did it feel like hobnobbing with New Zealand's version of the A-list? I didn't go. You didn't go? That's what I said. Well, why not? Because, Chris, because there was a bimbo. <laughs> no. What bimbo? Detective Inspector Lara Wade, bimbo. How could he do that to you? Because I'm the hired help. Good enough to host his cocktail party, but that's where it ends. That is absolutely... Your mail. <laughs> that is absolutely your mail right there. Bye. Any messages, Libby? On your desk. Hi, Mum. Hi. Hope you're not after money because I've just scraped together my last coinage for a coffee. Oh, do you want a loan? Sorry? Um, if you're short, you can borrow my cash card. No, thanks. What are you doing here? My assignment on medicine and surgery. Do you have time to answer a few questions? Not really. I've got As a, a surgeon, do you carry around your tools with you? Generally not. As an anaesthetist, would you? No. Why? This Dr. Devil, he's an anaesthetist, right? Right. So why does he carry around a case full of surgical instruments? I don't think he does. I've seen them. So if he doesn't use them for work, then what does he use them for? Are we still on your school project? <laughs> Come on, you have to admit he's a bit weird. Just a bit. But he's also a very good doctor and he seems like a perfectly nice man. He has a house full of Satan worshipping stuff. Sophie, if you're spreading silly gossip about oh, one of my... I'm not spreading gossip about anyone. I just think he's an interesting character. Have you worked with him much? Enough. When was the last time? Sophie, I really don't if have If you're time finding these questions annoying, you could just give me a copy of your roster. That way I can sort out what sort of doctors Rosters do what... Rosters are confidential. Oh, I know that, but it's for a project. I wouldn't no. Show... Man. Cranky. Fine, but don't blame me if I get a D for my assignment. Make sure every HOD... Make sure has... every HOD has two copies. Yes, Chris, I do know how to do my job. Thank you. Hold on a minute. Good manners and respect for your CEO are part of your job too. The cocktail party yesterday was a great success, thanks to you. And uh, if it seems like I overlooked that, then I'm sorry. And I'm sorry if you were expecting to attend the fundraiser, but I thought you realised tickets were strictly limited. But a police officer who has nothing to do with the hospital gets to go. Lara went as my partner, Libby. Oh, so she's your partner now. <laughs> well, no, I don't mean in this... I don't actually have to justify myself to you or any other member of the admin staff. Word of advice, then. PA to CEO, colleague to colleague, work associate to... Yes, colleague. Libby. I've said it before, and I still think I'm right. The amount of time you're spending with Lara Wade is not a good look. Libby... You're distracting her from the investigation. People might think... I'm sure well, no one people is... might think, how is Lara Wade going to catch the murderer when she's too busy swilling champagne cocktails and eating truffle canapes with you? I'm helping Lara with her inquiries. That's why I'm spending so much time with her, Libby, because I want this person stopped as much as anyone else does. So you're actually going beyond the call of duty? I'm helping Lara as best I can. Okay? Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Would you like a coffee? Yeah. That'd be nice. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, I can cover you on Wednesday. Oh, for my pain management study day. Excellent. You're the only person I know who can get excited about pain management. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. I love learning. <laughs> I hate to rain on your parade, but in light of your resignation, you won't be attending any study days. Alice, you'll be covering for Joey instead. He'll be taking Shanti's place on the pain management course. I'm telling you, Chris told me his relationship with that policewoman is purely professional. So? So? How many times do I have to tell you, Lib? Men are lying cheats who can't keep their things in their trousers. Not all men. Only the ones we happen to hook up with. Do I need to mention George? Do I need to mention our friend behind the bar over there? Chris is nothing like that. He is a professional, respected, sophisticated man. Why did his wife leave him, Lib? He is only hanging out with Lara so much because he's helping her with the murder investigation, which means he's dedicated and caring on top of everything else. Which means he's willing to go the extra mile, willing to... Willing to go the extra mile all the way to her bed. He lied. Of course he did. Hey, 
Everything OK here? Just the bell, thanks. Of course it didn't work. What do you think? She's just going to hand over the rosters? <laughs> the weird thing was, Mum seemed to think that Dr. Devil was a nice guy. Well, that's the image he wants to project. <sighs> I know. I mean, don't people realise that murderers aren't the obvious ones? The freaky looking ones with dark cloaks, black gloves and signs above their heads saying, I'm a murderer? Or the ones carrying bags full of scalpels and surgical knives? <laughs> I told Mum about that too and she said I had it wrong, but I didn't. That guy is so the killer. Well, so we go to the police. Who will say exactly what Mum said? That we're wrong? That we can't possibly be right because we're just a couple of thicko teenagers? Well, what next then? <sighs> Observation. Huh? We spy on the freakoid creep. And here's how we're going to do it. Come on, you. Well, I think I might stay and have another drink. Why? So you can torture yourself trying to spy on their little cosy, strictly professional date? No, because I feel like another one. You've already had three. Yes, and I feel like another one. On your own. Alice might turn up soon. Oh, I'm going to work. OK. Libby, just be careful, please. Don't you dare leave here alone. And get one of the bar staff to walk you to a taxi and watch you get in, OK? OK. Don't let him catch you staring. He'll think you're a psycho stalker. Hey, what can I get you? Another Chardonnay, please. I'm sorry. Pardon? If you've been hurt again, I'm sorry. What are you talking about? You and your boss, there's obviously more than a work relationship going on there. What is there? I can tell by the way you're looking at him. Yes, and if you haven't noticed, Kieran, he's here with someone else. Yeah, I noticed you noticing. And he's a fool. I'll choose you over her any day. That one's on me. You've got it wrong, Karen. My concern for Chris is purely professional, OK? So you can keep your assumptions and your speculations and your free drinks to yourself. Actually, Liv, that particular wine's 750 a glass if you insist on paying for it. Back soon. Libby, I, I wouldn't. All right, it's time you and I had a conversation. A conversation about you being a manipulative, no morals user. A callous, calculating cow who isn't above flaunting her cleavage to get what she wants. Do I know you? I, uh, I think she was talking to me. I'm so sorry. I'm sure you're not manipulative or a witch. And as for your cleavage, I'm just, I'm, you forgot to wash your hands. Why don't you splash some cold water on your face? Take yourself home, give yourself an aspirin, and go to bed. Probably don't want anyone else to see you in the state, especially not your boss. My boss is none of your business. Is that so? He is lonely and vulnerable right now, and you are taking advantage of that. You are throwing yourself at him so you can get answers out of him. If I wanted answers from Chris, I'd sit across a desk and ask him. He's married? I don't see a wife anywhere. Oh, there is one. Her name's Tony. And does Tony know that her husband's PA has the raging hots for him? Do your superiors know that you're shagging a witness? Yeah, that's right, I said shagging, which I don't often use because I don't like the word, but I don't like you either. I am seeing Chris socially, and yes, I met him through the course of my work, and there's nothing wrong with that. So you are shagging him then? Why don't you ask Chris that question? No, I didn't think so. It really would be a good idea to get yourself home. said I didn't want to talk about it. You have to. You've resigned. That's a huge thing. Not really. I'll find another job easily. Are you like this one? Alice, I'm not having this conversation. It's because your family doesn't like Scotty. It doesn't matter anyway. Scotty and I have broken up. I've noticed. You can't let him treat you like that. Please, I've got four weeks left to work. I just want to get them out of the way with no complications and hassles and no more mention of me and Scotty. You got that? Besides, she's way more likely to say yes if you're with me. You think? I know. My mum's got this whole, like, liberal act thing she does in front of our friends. Hey. Hi. Here for a ride home? Yes. And also, Nate and I have a huge favour to ask. You've heard of job shadowing? Mm -hmm. Well, we're doing this careers thing at school, and we need to... No. Mum. Absolutely. You can job shadow me at the primary care clinic. No, thanks. What? We want to shadow a surgeon. 
What's wrong with the primary care clinic? Uh, it's just mum's job's more exciting. Oh, charming. No, Sophie, I'm not having you following me around all day. What if it's not all day? This guy at school, he got to observe a tonsillectomy. <gasps> that would be amazing. You are not observing an operation, Sophie. Why not? Yeah, why not? For starters, we need to find an appropriate procedure. Then we'd need to get consent from the entire surgical team and we need to get consent from the patient as well. well so you could take care of that, darling. Well, then there's the concern of these two being able to handle it. It's not like on the television, Sophie. There's a lot of blood and tissue. Hey, what and about it... that guy I referred last week? He was in for a subtotal thyroidectomy, I think it is. Callum! He'd be fine with it. We had a good old chat about our kids. He wanted to be a doctor when he was young. Come on, Mum, please say yes. My entire professional career could be resting on this. Nate's too. Give me strength. It's alright, the coast is clear. What coast? Your boss and the police lady have just left. You shouldn't leave a glass unattended in a bar. Anybody might put something in it. But luckily for you, I was keeping an eye on it. Any bag. Thank you. <laughs> I don't think my night could possibly get any worse. <laughs> Quickly. No, it was a misunderstanding. I thought you were someone else. Yeah. Oh. Another shot, neighbor. Oh. That bar stool is a hazard. The bar stool moved. Why don't I take you home, mate? No, no, I need another wine. No, you need to go to bed. Um, can you cover me for 20 minutes? No, oh, Tiny said don't get in the cab on your own. Nope, she said don't leave on your own. Whatever, I'll be fine. I don't care, I'm taking you home. Come on. Come on. You know, you didn't have to take Shanti off the study day. Are you going to sideline her for the next four weeks while she works out her notice? Why should Shortland Street invest in her professional development when she's going to be working elsewhere? It'd be a waste of our money. Right, because you're so concerned about the hospital's finances. It's standard policy to assign study days to nurses who are staying on, not those who are leaving soon. And there's nothing personal going on? If Shanti has a problem, she can come and talk to me about it herself. Thank you. Okay, thanks very much. They'll appreciate it hugely. See you tomorrow. The other doctor said yes? Uh-huh. Oh, that's the patient and the team. We are so in. Not quite. There are still a couple of other members of the team that I haven't confirmed. <sighs> They're not going to deny two eager students a learning opportunity. Since when did you want to be a doctor anyway? I don't know what I want to be. Neither. But if we observe an operation, we'll be able to make more informed decisions. Butter wouldn't melt, would it? Why do I get the feeling something else is going on here? <sighs> Please, Mum. Night, Justine. See you tomorrow. Oh, Luke, have you met my daughter? I don't think so. Howdy. And this is Sophie's friend, Nate. His mum's Tess. Oh, all very happy families around this place, isn't it? <laughs> These two are hoping to observe our thyroidectomy tomorrow. Are you OK with that? Of course I am. I was even younger than the pair of you when I developed my interest in surgery. Thanks, Luke. Sophie, what do you say to Dr Durvill? Thank you very much, Dr Durvill. Yeah, thanks. You're both very welcome. And might I say, Justine, your daughter is almost as beautiful as you are. <laughs> oh, what was I telling you before, Sophie? Dr. Devil's a perfectly nice man. Uh-huh. Mm, it's stuck. Would you like some help? There's something wrong with it. Like there's something wrong with me. I must say you've had a good night's sleep, won't you, please? No, I mean, I mean, why doesn't anybody like me? Talk about Liv, everybody likes you. I mean, why don't men like me? Plenty of men like you, Libby. You're looking at one right now. No, I mean, ones who won't do the dirty. Ones who aren't secretly gay. Good night, Liv. No, wait. I like you too. And I want you to stay with me. It's... Probably not a good idea. Karen, I have never wanted someone as much as I do right now. Stay with me.
In a new two-part series, Charlie Bird recounts the footsteps of Kerry-born explorer Tom Crean on his courageous expeditions to the Antarctic at the beginning of the 20th century. That's on Monday night at 9.35.